Hi guys, welcome to our discussion on the classification of living things. So the idea here is, how do scientists make sense of all of the different kinds of living things on Earth? There are, there are over 10 million different species of, of living things, so how do you put them into some kind of sense that everybody on Earth can talk about? We, we want to be able to talk to people, whether they're in, you, in, in, in Russia, in China, in the United States, in Brazil, wherever a scientist is, we want to be able to say the same. If we say something, we want everybody to understand what we're saying. So like I say, there's, there's more than 10 million species of organisms on Earth, and we're always discovering new ones. Every time the endeavor goes out to the ocean, it finds new life, especially at the bottom of the ocean. So how do we organize all these different things? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. So when you, first of all, scientists really want to classify things. We like to classify things because it keeps things organized. When you go into the grocery store, if you wanted to find a T-bone steak, you would go to the grocery store, then you would go to the meat area, and in the meat area you would have poultry, which would have like chicken and 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 turkey and maybe duck or something like that you would go you you would if you're in the meat area you might have a pork you would have a pork area where there's spare ribs and pork chops and pork loin and and all these different pork products so we want a t-bone steak we would go to the beef area within the beef area there is ground beef for making like hamburgers there's pre-made hamburgers there's there's different kinds of steaks there's there's different kinds of cuts of beef. So we would go to the steak area where there's London broil and porterhouse and strip steaks. And we would, we would zero in on the, the T-bone steak that we were looking for. And just like we got more and more specific, so we went grocery store, meat area, beef area, steak area, and then T-bone steak, the, we try to organize living things in the same kind of an idea. You get more and more specific as you get closer and closer to what you're looking for. So, but we need some classification to help a system to help us to understand. Now, you know that a dog and a wolf are pretty closely related. How do you know that? Well, the answer is that a dog and a wolf have similar characteristics. But, but is a dog and a wolf more closely related? Or is a dog and a giraffe more closely related? Well, the dog and the wolf, right? But is a dog and a giraffe or a dog and a frog more closely related? Well, you would probably say the dog and the giraffe, and you'd be right. Um, but, but a dog and a frog are more closely related than a dog and a, um, and a sea star. So, so how does all that work? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, there are there is an accepted biological classification system that we use, where we assign each organism a specific name, so that no matter where you are, you can discuss a specific organisms. And we place these organisms into groups that have real biological meaning. Up until up until 1800s or so, we would use very descriptive names to to identify a specific organism. So if we were looking at oak trees, we may say oak with deeply divided leaves that have no hair on the underside and no teeth around their edges, and, and that might be a way to, for you to say the pin oak, okay, Quercus pinus. So here's the problem. I would describe it differently than somebody else would describe it, and that would cause a lot of confusion. And if I'm describing it differently than somebody else, now you've got organisms that have more than one name, and we don't want that either, because that becomes very confusing. So along comes this guy in the late 1700s, Carolus Linnaeus. He was a Swedish botanist. He was kind of full of himself. He was an interesting character. He, if he didn't like you, he would name a weed after you. It was pretty funny. Uh, but he was, he was definitely brilliant. And he figured out how to, how to 
to name organisms, his system is pretty much what we use today. It's called binomial nomenclature, and it means that every organism has two names. So, so the two names that we give are the genus and the species. So, the first name on all of these things on any organism is the genus. The second name is the species. These are all species. And, and so every organism has a genus and a species name. And just for, just for ha-has, um, this first one here, Pagorus longicarpus, is the long-wristed hermit crab. This Homerus americanus is the North American lobster. And Homo sapien is us, is, is humans. So, so here's the problem. The long-wristed hermit crab, the North American lobster, and humans are all common names. And they can be very confusing because if you went to Florida and said lobster, they would think you're talking about another kind of lobster called panularis. The panularis is the spiny lobster. Okay? And so if you say lobster, it's not really very specific and it causes confusion. But anywhere in the world, if you said Homerus americanus, you're talking about the same critter, the lobster that we all know and love to eat. I hope. Okay. So, so there's Carolus Linnaeus. Pretty interesting dude. Um, we're not gonna, we're not gonna dwell on him. Come on. All right. So if you notice, here's, here's a scientific name, Sienna capillata. Sienna capillata is the lion's mane jellyfish. It's, it's that red jellyfish that you see if you go to the beach, um, in the summertime. It's like a maroon colored on the inside. It's really pretty. But they're, they're, they give you a good little sting. Um, we'll talk about jellyfish coming up in this, in this course. Um, but I think they're really pretty. I'll, I'll, I can show you a picture, but right now, what I really want you to do, oop, bad fusco. What I really want you to do is I want to talk a little bit about how we write this. You'll notice that this is, is in italics. If you type the name of a, of an org, of an organism, you type it in italics. And you'll notice that the first letter of the genus is capitalized. Always the first letter of the genus is capitalized. The first letter of the species is always lowercase. If we type it, it's in italics. Okay. But if we write it, then we can't really italicize it, so we underline them separately. And, and just so you know, we talked about Pagoras, right? There's a bunch of Pagoras species. Just, just pearls of wisdom from Fusco. If we write, if we want to talk about a bunch of Pagoras, Pagorids, uh, Pagoras, species we we could put pigoras sp that means various species of pigoras if we're talking about sienna capillata a lot we could say we could shortcut it and say c capillata we would still underline like we did or italicize so those are just some rules about writing the the names of different kinds of organisms Okay, um, so Linnaeus grouped these organisms based on the common structures that they had. And so the way that we group things is called taxonomy. Uh, and it's based on, on these, these categories called taxa. One taxon, several taxa. So the smallest of these categories is species. Okay, so what's a species? Well, a species is a group, I'll give you the, the verbiage here. Matter of fact, let me, a species, oh, let me pick up the pen. 
species. Is a group of similar looking organism that can breed and produce fertile offspring in the natural world. Now, that's a lot of words, but what that means is that they have similar structures and if they if they can produce babies that can produce babies in the natural world, they're considered a species. Okay? So so dogs can breed together whether it's a chihuahua and a great dane believe it or not or or uh, uh, two labradors labrador retrievers they can breed and produce babies that can breed and produce more babies some things like a horse and a donkey create a mule the mule is is um sterile so it's not a species uh, there are or, there are examples some of you might have heard of say ligers a tiger and a lion wouldn't breed in the natural world, so a liger is not really a species. It's a man-made thing. Okay? But that's the definition of a species. We're going to talk a little bit about how that works as we go through this thing. So, so back to that Pagoras that we were talking about. Pagoras longicarpus is the long-wristed hermit crab. Pagoras polycaris is the flat-clawed hermit crab. There's another one around here called Pigorus um, pubescens that, that's another um, hermit crab that, that's fairly common here. But all of those are Pigorus. The difference is each one of them have their own species. Here's another example. This Fucus vesiculosus and Fucus spiralis. Those are two different algae. So if you look here, let me, let me pick up my pen again. This is Fucus. Oh, let me. This is Fucus uh, vesiculosus. I'm sorry, that's Fucus spiralis. This is Fucus vesiculosus. Both of those are rockweed. They look pretty similar. If you notice, they have they have this mid rib. This see this thing that I'm just kind of. That that's called a midrib, and we'll get to that when we talk about algae. But but few few coids have this midrib, and they have paired air bladders. So see this and this go together, that and that go together. They're paired. That's fucus. Okay. This one has the same thing. They're just a little bit different in the pairing. They do see the midrib right here or or right here. You can see it going up the blade, right? So so. Both of those are fucus, but they're different species of fucus. Okay, so here's another one. Felis domesticus and Felis concolor are both cats, right? Felis is cat. Domesticus, house cat. Concolor, mountain lion. Now, the lion that you think about when you go to the zoo and you see a lion, that's Panthera leo. And tigers are Panthera tigris. So they're the same genus, but they're different species. The All of those are cats. They would be in a family of cats. Okay? So it's a, it's a little bit broader of a, of a category, of a taxon. So the way that this works is the largest category is called domain. And underneath that are kingdoms. And then the group below that is phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, with species being the most specific. The way that you could remember the different classifications is with a mnemonic that's on the left-hand side here. Daring King Philip came over for great spaghetti. Um, sometimes I'll say, did King Philip come over for great spaghetti? But it's the same thing. 
the first letter of the word gives us the first letter of, oh, sorry, the first letter of the, I did it again, the first letter of the word gives us the first letter of the word that we're trying to remember. So, did king, domain kingdom, Philip for phylum and so on, I don't want to drive you crazy, but the daring King Philip came over for great spaghetti is a good way to remember. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Now you're all familiar with kingdoms because you should know, should know that there's an animal kingdom, there's a plant kingdom, there are fungi, there are protists. You might not know protists, but that's a single cell beastie. So that a lot of the plankton that we talked about were protists. But they're all under domain eukarya. And we're going to concentrate most of this course on marine animals. But, but just know, animalia is one of the kingdoms under eukarya. Under animals, there are a bunch of phylum. Phyla, excuse me. Chordata. Um, there are there are um, periphera, nidaria, platyhelminthes. All those are phyla, and then within those there are smaller classifications, smaller taxon called classes, and so on and so forth. Okay. So it's not always that cut and dry. We used to have two kingdoms: plants and animals, and and you got to remember that this is all a man-made thing. Organisms don't care where you put them or I put them. It's it's a man-made thing. We're trying to organize as best we can. So so there's not always a clear biological identity. Sometimes um, things are a little screwy. For instance, some organisms were actually moved from one classification to another. There has been um, an argument about where to put algae, whether you put it in the, in protista or, or plantae, most people now put it in plantae as a plant. Okay. Um, we came up with domains a few years ago. It's not that old. Okay. But when, when, when Linnaeus was around, there was two kingdoms, plants and animals. But pretty soon it became pretty obvious that you can't just have two kingdoms because there was a lot of organisms that, that acted that were that didn't really fit in either one or both. For example, here's here's oop, let me back up. Here's a here's an, an organism called Euglena. Now oh, let me see if I can get this up. This is a YouTube video. But Euglena Oh boy. I guess I gotta wait for the Okay. So here's Euglena. Euglena is a um, it's a it's a single cell little beastie. It's in a class called Flagellata that that swims around, so it moves kind of like an animal. But it has chloroplasts, so it does its own um, ph photosynthesis, so kind of like a plant. It it can also absorb nutrients through the water, so it can either make its own food or eat. So where do you put that? How do you know what to do with that? Well. The answer is you put it into a group called Protista that has more of those kinds of things. Here's another one. Bacteria. Bacteria don't have a nucleus. Bacteria, some of them, some of them photosynthesize and some of them don't. So how do you organize those? That's what we're kind of talking about. Um, it's really all about the structures that they have in common. Uh, let's see. So for instance, frogs that live in the same area look similar, but sometimes they might not mate at the same time, or they might not be in the same place. Okay, so in that case, they would be different species, believe it or not. The other thing we do is we look at chromosomes and we compare the chromosomes and the genes. So we look at the number of chromosomes, we look at the chromosomes themselves, we look at the the genes. So cauliflower, cabbage, kale, and broccoli look really different but they have almost identical chromosomes so they're in the same taxons many of the same taxons 
we look at DNA, we look at um, this idea of this thing called a cladogram, which is really phylogeny. So if you look at this thing, traditionally, if we do it based on um, characteristics, you could see that, that the crab doesn't really look like, like the barnacle or the limpet. But now we know that a, a, a barnacle is really close to a crab. It looks like a little shrimp on its back with a with a shell around it. So although it has that conical shell, it's really a, a crustacean. It, it has it's more closely related to crabs than it is to that limpet. A limpet is kind of like a snail. Okay, the only thing is it has one shell that's kind of open at the bottom, so it's flat, open foot at the bottom. We'll get to mollusks a little bit later. Um, so let me give you this. This is a really good little concept map about living things. So you can see that it's broken up into a couple of major groups. The first group is those with, with um, a nucleus, and the other group is those that don't have a nucleus. Those that don't have a nucleus are simpler. They are the prokaryotic cells. And their, their cell walls can be made a little differently. It depends on what's, what their cell walls are made of, whether they're in domain eukarya or domain archaea. And then there's one kingdom under each one of those, the eubacteria or, or the bacteria that most of us think about when we think about things like um, salmonella or, or uh, staphylococcus or those kinds of things. Those are all eubacteria. Other bacteria, the, the domain ar archaea, are the extremophiles. Those are the ones that live in like hot springs or in really, really, really salty water or, you know, and they have a little bit different of a, of a cell wall. We're really going to concentrate on, on these guys, organisms with a, with a nucleus, and they are in a group called eukarya. Okay. And there are four major kingdoms. There are four kingdoms under eukarya. And so we've kind of talked a little bit about protists. Those are the single-celled beasties, and, and they kind of a, it kind of is a catch-all. Fungi are another group. We're not going to spend any time on fungi, but fungi would be things like molds and yeasts and and um, and those kinds of things. We're we're not going to spend a whole lot of time. Kingdom plantae are the plants. They're the in, in terms of marine biology, most plants in the ocean are the algae. There are a few flowering plants, and we'll talk about those coming up. Where we're really going to spend most of our time is on these guys, the animals. Um, I don't know, that's my specialty, so that's where we're going to spend most of our time. So I hope you enjoy that. Okay, so I believe that that's it. I appreciate you following this to the end. Um, I hope you have a good day, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.